they only see like the, I get a client and I celebrate the client. Now, what I've realized is that whenever we are enrolling a lot of new clients, whenever we're really having an impact, we're celebrating a lot. Now, the question that I have to ask myself is, are we enrolling clients because we're celebrating or are we celebrating because we're enrolling clients? And I really believe that if you just celebrate even the small wins, if you just get in the habit, getting your reticular activating system, as we all have taught us, getting your RAS onto wins and identifying wins, no matter how big or small, and celebrating those, um, that that actually makes us more attractive to mm. what we want in life. Mm -hmm. I love that. Happy Friday, Youth Developer. Today's interview is with Matt Walroth. He helps nutrition coaches to build six to seven figure incomes and in working 30 hours or less. He is in the field of helping people who are in the service field. I'm happy to have him. He's also an enlifted coach and the host at his podcast, VIP Nutrition Coach, formerly known as Beyond Macro Podcast. Stay tuned. there tell me about how, how did you get to this book um and the work that he's been doing yeah so i can't remember exactly where i first heard about psycho cybernetics and maxwell maltz but um when i read that book it just everything clicked because i've been following our mutual friend our mutual connection mark england for for years he and i met uh, we were both Olympic lifting um, on platforms next to each other at a gym, and we just connected and talked, and, you know, we've been friends ever since, and from, like, I think the second day I met him, he's like, hey, would you mind checking out my ebook and letting me know what you think, seeing if it's something that would be <laughs> applicable to, to coaches and CrossFit coaches, and I read it, and back then, mm -hmm. what we know as in Lifted was Empowered Language Systems, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I read through it, and I was just like, <laughs> this idea the victim the way, mentality part yeah victim <laughs> mentality versus what he called architect mentality uh, back then and the idea that the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves yeah. so much affect what happens in life and so actually when i read psycho cybernetics i was like wow this resonates so deeply because it's so similar to the work i've been doing with empowered language systems, which became vocabulary, which is you know now enlifted. And just to give people an idea, this big word psychocybernetics. Yes. Um, the best way to think about it, the easiest way to think about it, is that a cybernetic mechanism is essentially like autopilot. So when you mm. put autopilot on on a plane, it's like if a wind starts coming in from the east and pushes the plane off its course a little bit to the west, then the autopilot is going to put it back on its course. Yeah. And that's the cybernetic mechanism. The autopilot puts it back on the course that it was programmed to be on. And so the idea with psycho cybernetics, it's like our brain is also a cybernetic mechanism. And so when we have an image about ourselves, or if we have a story about ourselves, mm -hmm then our brain is going to, if we get out of line with that, it's gonna bring us back in line with that image that we hold for ourselves or that story that we have about ourselves. And for a lot of people, that cybernetic mechanism in our brains is actually a limiting factor, a major limiting factor. And you know, one example is when I was nutrition and health coaching, I noticed that um, yo-yo you know, dieting was really common. Yeah where people would make really good progress and then sabotage it. And I just wondered why. And I thought, I went down the route of, oh, maybe I need to do, uh, run some labs and see if their thyroid is off or what it happens to be. And what it came down to was if somebody had this self-image that, oh, I'm, I'm overweight, everyone in my family is overweight, or I'm, you know, uh, I had one client told me everybody with my last name is overweight and dies of heart disease. Wow. <laughs> like mm -hmm. that's just it. Mm -hmm. And when he first lost all that weight, we recognized like that he started self-sabotaging and we caught it quick. 
And we identified that story. He's like, oh, well, just everybody in my family uh, is overweight and dies of heart disease. Everyone's tried to lose weight and they've failed. So that was the story that he had. And so a cybernetic mechanism was, oh, well, if you're deviating from that, if you've lost weight, if you're happy, if, if you're healthy, well, that's not what somebody with your last name, that's not the reality that they are meant to have. Yeah. So then all of a sudden their behavior starts sabotaging and pulling them back in line to being that person who is overweight, is going to die of heart disease, can't be healthy, can't be happy with their body. Yeah. And so that's really, you know, what made me bring psycho cybernetics and really bring through uh, more of this story work into my health and nutrition coaching. Yeah, I love that. So it's very similar to a lot of coaches who where where we find uh, when one of our clients is struggling, we go the extra mile to do more research and figure out how we can really help. So that's really mm -hmm. cool that you went that and I, went that route because when Mark said about language in the short term, right? Words influence our Im imagery that also influence our feelings. And then he said in the midterm, those uh, feelings and images that we create, create a story. And in the long term, those stories become our reality. And back to what you were saying, right? So we could lose weight. If our reality is like, well, I'm gonna be overweight the way all my, my family has been, then you go back to that. So that's really mm -hmm. cool uh, about the book. I actually, I have it in my Amazon cart definitely going to check it out. Have you heard of the book? It didn't start with me. Yeah. My wife actually read that book last year. It's fascinating. It is. Yeah. I, uh, I first heard, did the auto book and I, I had, I had to, I didn't, I don't have the hard copy, but um, definitely I printed out the PDF. So he has yeah. a guide. So I've been, I'm halfway through it, not completely, <laughs> yeah. halfway through it. Because when you mentioned about your client in his family, that, that was the thought that came in mind. I was like, mm, okay, that's been a story has been planted. It has been going through generations. So very cool. Okay, good. I'm glad that we, I was like, what? I want to know what this book is all about in the term. Uh, so I love that. Okay. As far as coaches, people, people who work in the field of service, when it comes to self-care or long-term success and focusing on the mindset, what will be some of those mm. tips that you will have for people who are in this field of helping others like you, like you went the extra mile <laughs> to help your client succeed? Mm. Yeah, I think the biggest tip that I give all of the coaches who I mentor, and this is actually built into our mentorship programs, is that we build in a deload week. So the thing is, in lifting, if anybody's familiar with it, I was training Olympic weightlifting for a while. I would take a deload week every fourth week. My coach programmed it in. Um, and what we did on the deload week wasn't just not lift. But what we did is we would come in, we would lift, it would be like 40, maybe 60% of our max. So really lightweight compared to what we were usually lifting. Uh, we just weren't doing as much total volume, as much total load, but we were still moving and doing a little bit more recovery work, maybe go in, get a massage that week, um, really put the focus on recovery, still doing what we needed to do to get better, but not pushing ourselves to the max. And so right now we've actually built into our programs and I recommend this for anybody who's in service to schedule in a deload week for yourself where you really focus on filling your cup on self-care. You can still be in service. It's not like you take you know, a vacation every fourth right. week, but you do take that week to focus more on yourself and filling your own cup and you know, putting your own mask on, so to speak. You can still be in service to people, but the balance of you being in service to others versus you being in service to yourself it really shifts in favor of being in service to yourself. Yeah. And so the way that we've built this into the program is, well, for any women who are, are having a normal menstrual cycle, then you might want to do it during your luteal phase when yeah. you're naturally like needing a little bit more rest. And so that can be a really good time to jump into a deload week. And then 
for the men, it's like, I know for me, I get like a sympathetic luteal phase when, you know, my wife is in hers. And so <laughs> if I could, I would try to match it up. But if there's any single men out there, you can figure out essentially what your best cycle is. And for me, it was every sixth week. So I felt mm -hmm. found that I could push for about five weeks uh, before I really needed to take that deload on the sixth week work-wise. Yeah. And so it really comes down to having a little bit of self-knowledge because there's been times in my life where I've been burned out. I pushed myself too hard for too long and maybe I could only push for a week and I needed to alternate weeks, but yeah. figure out where you're at in your phase of life and then uh, figure out what your best deload cadence is. Is it every fourth week? Is it every sixth week? Um, yeah. And take that time to really fill up. Otherwise, you'll end up burnt out and you can't be in the best service to others. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for bringing that up too. I, we had a uh, uh, Karan, I always say her name wrong, <laughs> in the channel and she spoke about the different faces, right, for the woman and their cycles. And the word yeah. that I love that she used was honor your cycles. And, yeah. and you said deload, right? As in D-E-L-O-A-D, -E right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And the way I see it is, um, you know, in New York City, we have four seasons. And in the mm -hmm. winter, you have to hunker down and stay in one place. And then comes spring. Then spring is so much sweeter when we know mm -hmm. that the days are going to be longer and you're going to be doing different activities. And it's reminding ourselves that there is a season, right, or a cycle. I, I know before I was in nutrition or coaching, I will, everything was, my world was 90-day calendar. And there were four yeah. <laughs> for after school and summer camp. So, um, yeah, so that's really neat to, I love that word. So whatever phrase, guys, you guys want to use, uh, whether that's honoring your cycle, your season or deload, um, you know, it's that there's a time for everything. So I love that you mm -hmm. said that. You mentioned about burnout because the truth is when we're in, um, when we're in service and we're passionate about something, um, we can get so, <laughs> what do you think, at least for yourself, led to the burnout of going really deep in, in the hustle? Because that's, that's what it is, mm. right? When you work for yourself, uh, what do you think led yourself there? Yeah, so the last time that I was really badly burned out would have been about 2014, and at that point, my nutrition and health coaching business hadn't fully taken off. Mm -hmm. It had gotten some traction, but I was putting a lot of hours in. So I was managing a gym. I was doing PT clients. I was coaching CrossFit classes. That's how I was making my money to live in LA, a really high cost of living yeah. city to be in. And so I was doing that for, you know, six hours or more per day. And then I was training for... CrossFit regionals and really training at a high competitive level. And then in my spare time, pretty much every other hour of the day, I was pouring that into building up my health and nutrition coaching business. And so I was just, everything was grind, hustle, grind, hustle, pushing myself physically, pushing myself mentally. Um, even when I would go get a massage, I would go to like Thai massage because it was like the hardest massage <laughs> and you could really feel it. Like I was in this really heavy masculine energy, lots of output, and I wasn't really doing much to nourish myself. There wasn't enough of that like feminine balance to that point in time. Yeah. And the other thing that I started losing touch with was why I was doing what I was doing. I would start to resent when I had to show up to coach a CrossFit class because it was keeping me away from building my nutrition and health coaching business. Mm. I would start to resent my training because at that point I hadn't even made it to CrossFit regionals yet. I was like, what am I, what am I even doing? <laughs> and with the coaching business, I was putting all these hours in and I was kind of getting some traction in 2014. It wasn't until 2015 that my business really took off online. And I was putting so much time and effort and energy in, and I was just seeing the impact that it was having on my bank balance. And I was like, it doesn't match, it doesn't match at all. And so I think it was a mixture of this like really heavy masculine output without that feminine nourishing of myself, as well as losing touch with why I was doing what I was doing. 
um, you know, it was just, it felt like I was putting a lot out and I wasn't getting a lot back. And that led to burnout. I think what I could have done to avoid that is obviously giving myself a little bit more, more nourishment, taking the deload weeks really seriously, um, but also reconnecting with why I was doing the things I was doing. It's like, if I had connected that coaching a CrossFit class was what was paying the bills for me to be able to put the time in to creating this nutrition and health coaching business online that I was truly passionate about, that that was actually, you know, supporting me while I was building that up. And it was something that I actually enjoyed it was better than some other soul sucking job. Yeah. Then I could have seen how all these things were actually benefiting me and nourishing me and nurturing me. And I just didn't see it. I was too worried about, I'm not at the big outcome yet. I'm, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like I'm making the progress I want to make. Felt like I was kind of stuck in a way, just spinning my wheels and putting all that out and feeling stuck is, I, at least for me, a recipe for burnout. Yeah. Yeah. What's a ritual or something that you do for you to stop and check your progress uh, in your, in your business right now as a, as a coach who helps other coaches? Something that is huge is just celebrating. Yes. Celebrating wins. Okay. So, so important. I, mm -hmm. I celebrate them as soon as they happen. Every time um, I hear from my team that uh, we enrolled a new coach to one of our mentorship programs, mm -hmm. I go over to my wife. We're like dancing around <laughs> the lounge room. We're like, Woo! you know, like Patricia just signed up. We're going to change her life, blah, blah, blah. Like just getting really excited <laughs> about it. Um, you know, celebrating with the team members, really putting a heavy focus on celebration. Um, when the outcomes happen, mm -hmm. it helps so much. And something that I've noticed with some coaches is they only see like the, I get a client and I celebrate the client. Now, what I've realized is that whenever we are enrolling a lot of new clients, whenever we're really having an impact, we're celebrating a lot. Now, the question that I have to ask myself is, are we enrolling clients because we're celebrating or are we celebrating because we're enrolling clients? And I really believe that if you just celebrate even the small wins, if you just get in the habit, getting your reticular activating system, as yes. Mark taught us, getting your RAS onto yes. wins and identifying wins, no matter how big or small and celebrating those, mm -hmm. um, that that actually makes us more attractive. To mm. what we want in life. Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, yeah, celebrating. That is so key. Do you know about Marie Forleo from B-School? I've heard, yeah, I've heard some, I'm a big fan of Sean Croxton's Quote of the Day show. And so I've heard a few snippets of Marie on Sean's show. Yeah. She's huge on celebrating. Uh, when mm. you sign up for B-School, she has Facebook live groups uh and so yeah her and her team I, I love it because she's very uh close to her team and I've heard you say that too when we've been um exchanging um direct messages your team your team and I was like oh I love it it sounds like you know right now it's my husband and I <laughs> and yeah. we have uh two enlisted coaches who are helping us and our programs in the schools as well because I'm doing the mindset of the entrepreneur. I did it for middle school and I'm going to do it for high school. And so it's really neat to have like our enlisted family come into our world. And so when you've been saying team, I'm like, yes, this is the way I love to see my team, right? Because it is a company. A company is not run by one person. <laughs> yeah. So I love that. Okay, well, that's awesome. Well, thank you. What will be um, just the last thing that you will uh, encourage people? And I know we've been talking about self-care. Um, we've been talking about uh, the seasons in the cycle and honoring and then celebrating. So when it comes to yeah. that book that we were talking about at the beginning of our conversation and um, our mindset, what will be something that um, people can put into practice or something very practical when it comes to mindset for long-term success? Yeah, I really believe that having a daily practice for your mindset, and um, I think that's super important. And 
if we talk about that book, if we talk about psycho cybernetics, yes. um, Maxwell Maltz, he talks about creating the theater of your mind, like the movie of what you want for mm-hmm. yourself and what that vision looks like. And the way that he recommends doing it is setting aside time each day that you play that movie in your head of what the future that you're calling in looks like, what the vision that you're calling in actually Mm -hmm. looks like. And the way that I've done that and the way that I often encourage clients to do that is in the morning, go through, I like to write up what my vision is for the future. You can choose whatever duration you want, you know, next three years, five years, whatever. For me, it's, it's three years. And I've typed that up. And over the course of a week, I filled in more details because that's part of the theater of the mind is initially the movie, the vision, it might be a little bit blurry. It's almost like you're looking at it if you had poor vision without glasses on. <laughs> and then eventually it's getting clearer and clearer until it's in full HD. And when you can see that vision in full HD and you practice that every single day, then it's way more likely to actually become reality. And so setting aside even 10 minutes, I'd say over the next week to just start typing out or writing out handwriting what your vision is for three years in detail, more and more and more. What's family life look like? What's your wealth look like? What's your business look like? What's your day-to-day look like? Mm -hmm. Just getting really, really clear on those things and becoming more detailed every single day. Yeah. One of the things I think a lot of people miss when they end up doing an exercise like that is uh, missing who is Matt three years from now that has all of those things or who, who is Patricia three years from now that has all those things. Cause it's not the, the same person I am today. It's not the same person you are today. Yeah. Um, there's going to be certain things that are different about who you are. And so I think that's an important thing to include in that theater of the mind or that vision is who is that person? Mm -hmm. You know, what's, what's might be different. Like how confident are they? How do they carry themselves? Like if you were to look in the mirror and it was your three year from now self looking back, what are you noticing about them? Mm. And I think that's a really important thing to be able to bring in because then you can start taking action from that person's shoes. You know, the three years from now, the person who has all that, if you start taking action as that person today, then in three years, you'll be there. You'll have those things. And I I really believe that because I look back at my notebooks from three years ago and I'm like, wow, (laughs) I am, I am that guy right now. Like I have those things that I wanted to have. Yeah. um, Yeah. I really believe that comes down to just writing it down. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Power of the pen (laughs) and power between years as well yeah I love that you know someone I forget what uh, program that was in the it was a um, was called the five minutes a day of big thinking uh, mm-hmm. I want to say it was the Greg Valentine the perfect day formula uh, mm-hmm. that he had that for I think we did it for 21 days uh, my husband applies it too well he's like well five is nothing I'll do ten <laughs> He like pushed it over, which with uh, the number that you su- suggested, maybe that's a guy thing. <laughs> but for me, the five minute really worked. And uh, when I shared that exercise with someone, um, they had asked, um, well, what did you see? And I still remember being in this very office, closing my eyes and I was at the beach and I was definitely in California because that's where I'm bound. When my husband mm-hmm. and I got married, we said we were moving to California. It's been almost nine years. We're, we've, it's been some delays. We go there and visit. However, I was definitely in a beach in California. And future Patty, they call me, I know it's just Patricia everywhere, but you could call me Patty. <laughs> Here comes <laughs> Patty. And the exercise of whoever was doing the prawn said, what is Patty going? Patty's going to come very close to your ear and she's going to whisper something. And um, so here comes Patty and she said, you're beautiful. And I was like, what? (laughs) Because that has been my story, you know, before Mark England, you know, of not believing that and and just going there. And and it's so funny you mentioned that because I have not shared this with for someone with a long in a long time. So thank you for reminding me about the future, Patty, speaking back to me. 
and and that that could happen obviously and the power of pen to paper it's really mm -hmm. neat you said it was the theater of the mind yeah that's what maxwell maltz calls it in psycho cybernetics and um i think it was matt fury who essentially bought the rights to uh the psycho cybernetics institute's intellectual property yeah. um he wrote a book called theater of the mind actually Ooh, yeah. so there's yeah, or i think it's an audio program called theater of the mind okay. it's, it's, yeah it's a good listen as well that's awesome um speaking yeah. of programs i know you have a program right for coaches on your facebook group can you talk to us a little bit about that because our community is full of teachers educators people who are also in the healthcare because we're action takers and yeah. we believe that the best form of youth development is by us living life to the full. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that and um, we'll, we'll put that in the uh, video description below. Awesome. Yeah, so what I do is I help health coaches, nutrition coaches and RDs to actually build out their dream business. So we offer business mentorship where we help coaches get more leads, enroll more clients, and actually provide a VIP experience is what we call it uh, to your clients because we know that health coaches, nutrition coaches, RDs, everybody got into this because they wanted to have an impact in other people's lives. They have had their own journey usually that led them yes. to that place. And so it's like, we wanna provide a great experience. We don't wanna just provide uh, a, a funnel that doesn't have a soul and sell somebody into a meal plan. It's like, we actually wanna be in service. And so, yes. no, I think that's why it's important to, to bring that into what we teach. And it's part of what I did to become successful as a, as a health and nutrition coach as well. Yeah. So, you know, we do offer that as a service, but um, you know, one of the best places to get uh, content that I put out for free is our online nutrition coach community Facebook group. So if you just went to facebook.com slash groups slash nutrition coach community, uh, you would be able to request access to that. Uh, my business partner, Kate and I, we do a live training every single week in there to help you get more leads and roll more clients and serve them better. So we've had people, I literally just got a message before this, a woman in India, she reached out and she was like, oh my gosh, I just wanted to celebrate. Like she's just a free member of the group. She's like, I just sold my first package for 2000 US dollars. Now this wow. is a woman in India. That's so, so cool. Yeah. So we really try to provide a lot of value in there, even if you're not a member of our mentorship. And I don't know exactly when this show will come out, but we're going to do a five day challenge on March 1st to help coaches get at least five testimonials collected get five clients, do it in five days nice. and do it without needing social media. Social media helps for this challenge, but it's not required. Right. Um, yeah, it's going to be a really cool challenge. It begins March 1st. Um, you know, if you watch this and it's March 5th and you missed out on it, all good. We'll run it again. I'll always announce those things in the online nutrition coach community. So that's the best place uh, I love to find it. And, and get value. So you love to do challenge. I love challenges. That's like my thing. Mm. <laughs> That's yeah. so great. And I love that you call it mentorship. So mentors, the mentorship is the paid one, but the Facebook group also has a free access to it as well. Yeah, you can access the Facebook group for free. We've got an entire okay. library of you know nice. trainings that we've done in there. We've got a lot of resources we've given to our members for free. Yeah, we just yeah. try to really serve in there. And anybody who wants to really take the next steps after they've seen you know, what we give away for free, they can, you know, reach out to us and look at mentorship. But I always recommend starting with a group and yeah. seeing if you like what you see first. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, we're both enlisted coaches. I, I love to have people who do the same thing that I do because we are, I'm not going to help everybody that I know. <laughs> uh, and someone yeah. may connect with you, Matt, that's really mm. close to me. And that's great because I'm here so I can share the same things that I'm learning so we get involved, right? And so yeah. I love to bring people to the channel for that very same reason. And um, I'm going to check it out for myself because I did check out your last cool. video. Super good on the um, on mindset. And I love how you said, if you want to continue the conversation, head over to your Facebook group. So I remember yeah. that. So I will, I will definitely check it out myself. Uh, if you're going to check it out, guys, uh, tag me in it, find me, uh, and we'll do it together. So, uh, Matt, I really mean, appreciate
appreciate your time. Kate, I saw her in the last video. I don't know if it was you or anyone in your team, but they gave me the resource of a PDF for Think and Grow Rich. So yeah. you guys are in the business of giving resources and helping other coaches or people in the service field. And mm -hmm. that, that was felt. <laughs> Your answer was quick. And I, I, I'm really, truly grateful for that. Awesome. Yeah, thank awesome. you. Yeah, Appreciate absolutely. Look forward to having you in the community too. Yeah, yeah, it should be fun. Yeah. And we will let uh, the rest of the Lifted family know as well. So thank yeah. you again Kate so much. Kate is an Lifted coach, by the way. Who? Kate? Kate? My business partner. Yeah, she's in Lifted level two as well. Really? Yeah. So okay. she's in the Lifted community. Yeah. I I gotta get better at Slack. I have not <laughs> uh, all negation acknowledged. Have been yeah. in there as much as I have been maybe in the last, I would say, month. And so Kayla is the one who connected us. Um, yeah. she's the one who put my name and that message that you put in. So now we're going to Mighty Network. So I will look for Kate. <laughs> I'll look for you guys and I will see you and you listener. Uh, if you want to find out more, get the resources, get to find out about Matt's community, uh, to see if that's somewhere where you want to get more mentorship from him and from Kate. So Matt, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for your time in visiting the youth developer. Really appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you, Patty. Thank you so much. Awesome.